Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your October 2019 mid-month general readings. Uh, yes, my background has changed. I am off traveling again back in Eastern Europe. Uh, I stay at a variety of different Airbnbs or those type of establishments while I'm traveling and they're always a bit hit and miss. Uh, this one the lighting is a bit dim so I apologize for that uh, but hopefully it's sufficient enough for you to see the cards. I am using the Gilded Tarot by artist Ciro Marchetti. So welcome everyone, welcome to newcomers and first timers and welcome back to followers and subscribers. It's great to have you all tuning in. Thank you for that and for all the likes, shares and subscribes as well. This reading is for the air sign of Libra for the last half of uh, October 2019. So we're looking at the last couple of weeks of October for our lovely Librans. As you know, general readings always resonate a little differently for everybody. So watch your rising and moon sign videos if you know them. Uh, they can provide additional clarification or sometimes they can just resonate a little more predictably than your primary sun sign at different times. And if any of you are interested in reaching out for a personal reading with me, you can click on the description link below for more information. Uh, you can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can also find all that info by uh, going to my YouTube channel's homepage and clicking on the about button there. I offer a wide variety of readings in all areas of life and I can usually respond to your initial inquiry with more info uh, the same day you write or within the first 24 hours. And scheduling is pretty good too. Uh, I'm, I do readings full time, five to six days a week. It's all that I do. So I'm pretty diligent at working with everyone's schedules to get you readings as quickly as possible. So email me if you're interested and we'll set something up for you. All right, let's move right into this. Let's see what the remainder of October has in store for our Librans. Okay, Libra, we begin with the Ace of Swords, followed by the Ten of Wands. We have the Knight of Cups, followed by the Four of Swords. From the bottom of the, the deck, we have the Wheel of Fortune in the upright. So divine timing and orchestration is at play here. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune in the upright is the energy that's uh, the energy and focus that's over uh, you for the last half of October and this is God's Spirit, your angels and guides working, uh, bringing things together in a meant to kind of way. We have no control over that because it's energy of spirit, of course. In the upright position, it does imply uh, that whatever they are working on for you, it's in it's for your greater good. And it, it with the Wheel of Fortune in the upright typically represents a stroke of good luck, of good fortune, of things working in your favor. Uh, but it also does represent you know, forces, of course, beyond our control working, particularly in terms of, of timing uh, and orchestrating things to happen. And even when that shows up in the upright, even when that represent, even when things that are happening are perhaps a challenge or not to our liking, it always represents that it's a meant to sort of thing and that it's for our greater good and our joy, even if sometimes it's difficult to see that at the time. It looks like you are being given uh, kind of an epiphany about something or you're seeing an answer, a solution or something in a different light about something that's been quite burdensome for you. We have the Ace of Swords with the Ten of Wands. The Ace of Swords, Swords is all about what goes on up in our heads. It's governed by the element of air, which is all about our perceptions, our perspectives, what we believe, our ideologies, our thoughts, words, ideas, uh, intelligence, communication. Uh, everything that goes on up in our heads or relates to that. Higher education and learning, aces are the number one. The ace of swords, I always like to see aces in readings because they represent a little extra something, uh, kind of like fairy dust, even though there's no such thing. Um, they, they always represent the beginning of something new or the opportunity for a new beginning. So the ace of swords is kind of like the light bulb going off over your head, the epiphany. It also represents a success that comes after, uh, likely usually after a significant struggle of some kind, but it comes as a result of seeing something. It's kind of like you're, oh, now I see it for what it is kind of thing, or oh, what about this kind of solution or answer, or seeing something for what it really is, 
uh, or in a brand new light, but seeing it for the reality of something. Uh, because the Ace of Swords, it's not emotional energy, so the Ace of Swords, the sword comes in and it cuts away any extraneous fantasy and illusion and emotional distortion and illuminates something for exactly what it is, which can help us, you know, make decisions about something. The Ace of Swords comes in and provides us with an opportunity to create a healthier reality for ourselves. So that's kind of like, oh, that kind of, you know, that's what's occurring. Now, what clarifies it is the Ten of Wands, which is a card that represents, as you can see, carrying a heavy load, a burden, or it could be just a challenge, something you've been working on for a long time. Tens do represent cycle ending, something coming to a close. You can see this man's head is up. He is looking at his destination, which is right. It's very, very close. This place where he can lay this burden down, stand up, be free from it, and take a deep breath. So the end of something is coming. You are, you're. It's like very close. It's kind of like you can you can see the end of it coming. And you know, I always feel like the Ten of Wands is a long-standing card. Like whatever the situation is for you, and it's a general reading. So for some of you, it might be in love and romance. Some of you, it might be in relationships of another kind, friends or family. It could be something to do with with a project that you've been you know, or a job, work, career that you've been putting a lot of energy into. It started off maybe as one or two ones, but over time it has become this heavy burden, this kind of cross you've had to bear. It is coming to an end. I feel like some of you, I think some of you are seeing a situation, probably a difficult situation that you have been investing a lot of effort into. And I think spirit has brought this in or allowed something to happen which has made you look at something even if it's a difficult looking at something but it has exposed something for being what it really is maybe it is the nature of what this burden is maybe something that you've been investing or someone or a group of people that you have been you know a relationship a job something that you have been investing a great deal of effort into and it's you know you've been doing it successfully but you can't even stand up straight under the burden of this and all of a sudden you are seeing it in a new light, uh, in the actual clear reality of what it is and whatever it is that has caused you to see it this way, whether it's positive or whether it feels, you know, painful or challenging, this is something that spirit has either helped orchestrate or has allowed to happen to give you this clarity. Now, next to that, we have the Knight of Cups and the Four of Swords. So knights usually represent offers, opportunities uh, coming in, opportunities for change. Uh, the speed at which a situation moves. Cups is water energy, which is the energy of the heart, our emotions basically, our emotional landscape feelings. It's also the area of our life that often deals with relationships. So the Knight of Cups is offering his, is, you know, always there kind of rushing in to offer his love, his support, his or her help, encouragement, etc. Very, you know, giving, always rushing in to give, give, give. Now, the interesting thing is, that it's a company clarified by the Four of Swords, which is a card of withdrawal, rest, respite, restoration, healing, needing to step back, needing to take time off from whatever the conflict is, whatever this burden is you've been carrying, and it's right next to the Ten of Wands. The Four of, of Swords usually shows up when somebody is just kind of worn out, exhausted, you know, overwhelmed. They've been doing so much and they need to take a step back, a reprieve from that, particularly their thoughts about this. And it's clarifying the Knight of Cups. So I think for, for many of you, you have been... I mean, for some of you, you know, it could be somebody coming in to offer their support to you in a situation. For some of you, it might be that. Uh, for others of you, it might be you offering your help in a situation. But I think for many of you, you're, this is actually your wanting to or making the decision to withdraw from a situation where you have already been giving and giving and giving, or you're always there to kind of give in, to give to somebody. It could be you know, a work situation, it could be a relationship, romantic or otherwise, where, you know, the burden has come from something goes wrong or there's a crisis and you, you rush in to kind of save the day and help, but it keeps going on over and over and over again until over time it's become this burden. And you're, you're, you're seeing or making the decision or thinking, you know, I'm seeing this for actually what it is and I'm done with this. I, I need to withdraw from being always 
kind of being the one to come in and help and give and solve everything and put out the fires and all of that kind of stuff. I feel like something has occurred to make you see this. Uh, for example, for some of you, it may be a personal relationship, romantic or friends or family or otherwise, where, you know, the person always seems to go through this cycle of something happening and they need someone to come in and rescue them or fix it or help or, you know, and you're just always kind of rushing in to do that or coming in to do that. And it's, you know, over time it's become this burden and something has happened. <clears throat> maybe something difficult but it what it d has is kind of cleared the manipulation or the emotional distortion around it and allowed you to see exactly what it is perhaps a codependent unhealthy uneven sort of relationship regardless of what area of your life it's resonating in let's pull a card or two about that but spirit has allowed this to happen either has orchestrated this to happen or has allowed this to happen so that you can get the clarity from it so that you can uh, you know with your eyes open make the decision to either stay in the cycle or uh, withdraw from it because it looks like it's just worn you out or depleted you in some way the Ten of Swords and right behind it is the Three of Pentacles. So the Ten of Swords is often the betrayal card or the card that represents feeling stabbed in the back maybe or thrown under the bush or, or the bush, thrown under the bus, <laughs> thrown, thrown over the bush and under the bus. You know it's a card that represents a lot of uh, uh, you know a fair amount of pain you know something happening unexpectedly to you, deep disappointment or, or being betrayed or cheated on or taken advantage of or finding out that you were taken advantage of or exploited in some way. Another 10 here, uh, the, the 10 of swords represents too. The positive aspect to this is you can see there's a, I mean it, it allows whatever it is that caused this man to be face down on the ground, it's over. And it, again, it's allowed for clarity. Um, albeit painful clarity, but clarity. And there is a golden light shining through this. It's a healing light. It's time to get up, brush yourself off, and go, okay, this is what it is, and now I can actually see clearly, and I can remove myself from this. There's a new day dawning. The sun uh, is rising in the background, and the animals are beginning to return to the scene. I mean, the Ten of Wands and the Ten of Swords are the two really challenging tens to have um, because, you know, they represent... A really heavy burden coming to it, but they represent whatever it is coming to an end. Uh, now, the Ten of Swords uh, was accompanied to the card behind it was the Three of Pentacles, which is a card of teamwork, of working together, compromise and negotiation towards one common goal. Uh, everybody having one common goal or thinking they have one common goal and everybody kind of working towards that goal, contributing their own you know, resources, ideas, etc. So, you know, it, what it looks like, Libra, is that you were contributing, working, investing a lot of, you know, time, effort, money, love, etc., whatever it is, into something with another person or other people. You thought everybody else was on board with the same motives, doing the same thing. Something has happened that was perhaps very painful or very difficult or very challenging. Um, but what it has to, and that it has exposed it for being some in its clarity, not what you were thinking it was. And you're kind of like going, oh my gosh, I've been giving all of this and, and only to discover that it's not even and that I'm being taken advantage of or whatever it is. Um, but at the same time, it does provide you with realistic clarity so that you can make the decision moving forward, probably to leave this situation. Um, but if you stay in, you're, 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 you're going to be staying with knowing what it actually is because the Ace of Swords above all brings us in some form the opportunity to create a more healthy reality. So if you're, for example, been in a relationship with somebody who's been very selfish and, you know, just taking, 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 but you feel like you're helping them and all of a sudden you find out that they're taking advantage of your help or cheating on you or something of that sort, you realize that you guys weren't on the same page. It's painful to see that, but it gives you the opportunity to uh, you know, either if you can both get on the same page or fix it or to exit the situation so that you can create a more healthy real life for yourself. That's what's kind of happening here. And over it all is the wheel of fortune, which means it's for your good, for your advantage to give you the opportunity uh, to make some chances, to make some changes, 
uh, maybe set some boundaries with this person. Uh, if not exit, definitely set some boundaries and just kind of rewrite the whole rule thing um, now that you can see the truth and clarity. And I hope that you do because spirit is driving this for you. Even though, you know, there's, it looks like there's a lot of aspects to it that are painful and challenging. But you're being given the opportunity to make changes based on a more realistic perspective of what this situation is or relationship or whatever it is, is. Uh, so I hope you do take advantage of that. So Libra, that wraps up your reading for the last half of October 2019. I'm not sure if I can say I hope you enjoyed it. This one, you know, it looks like it was very challenging, but I hope that uh, it provides you some helpful feedback and insight um, in order to move forward in a healthier way. Uh, if this reading resonated for you or if any of the readings do and you'd like to reach out for a more personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, just click on the description link below for more information or feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be most happy to work with you. I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the November 2019 general readings. Until then, I wish you every good thing under the sun and I hope to see you back here again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.